Next-gen sequencing has proven to be a powerful tool in discovering how genetic variation can affect function in numerous conditions and populations. Rightfully so, many have compared this search for a few causal variants to finding a needle in a haystack. As we dive deeper into the genome, the transcriptome, the epigenome, or the metagenome, many scientists have already found their favorite handful of needles to study. Using PCR to amplify these regions of interest, they can create sequencing libraries consisting of only the small subset of targets they're interested in studying. While this can greatly increase throughput and decrease sequencing cost, it does require some specific considerations to generate good sequencing data. In this video, we will discuss the impact of sequencing Amplicon and low diversity libraries on Illumina instruments and share our best practices for generating optimal quality results. In applications like whole genome sequencing, libraries are generated from many different fragments of DNA. This process creates clusters that are diverse in sequence and gives even representation of A's, C's, T's, and G's at each sequencing cycle. Amplicon libraries are different. They are, by design, generated from the same short segment of sequence. This means the signal in each cycle of the run will be dominated by one base. We call this a low diversity library. For example, this figure shows the sequence generated from four separate clusters in both a diverse and low diversity library. Highlighting cycle four, we can see that each base is represented in this cycle in the diverse library, contrary to the low diversity library where only the T base is present. This lack of base diversity can impact how data are acquired and processed during Illumina sequencing. It can inhibit the ability of the instrument to identify clusters and to accurately correct the raw signal, leading to poor quality base calls. At the beginning of sequencing, the instrument creates a map of clusters on the flow cell. This process is called template generation. However, some of the clusters may be too close together, have the same base call, and be mistaken for one big cluster. To correct for this, we use multi-cycle detection to allow the software to detect individual clusters that are close together or partially overlapping. Here we see an example of two clusters with a G base in cycle one that could be mistaken for one larger cluster. Cycle two helps to clarify the two clusters as one cluster gives G signal and the other cluster gives a C signal. Depending on the instrument and chemistry type, we use between four and 20 cycles to generate this template of cluster locations. Now let's consider a low diversity library. If all clusters have the same sequence, there will be no way to accurately separate multiple overlapping clusters during template generation, leading to the creation of an inaccurate cluster map. For example, if I pour out a number of different colored chocolate candies, I can easily focus on the borders of each individual piece due to the different colors. However, if I pour out candy of just one color, it becomes a little more difficult to determine where one chocolate ends and another begins. When the sequencing instrument mistakes multiple clusters for one big cluster, ambiguous base calls can result and lead to this cluster failing quality filtering. To illustrate this, let's revisit an earlier example. Suppose clusters number one and number two of our low diversity library were close together on the flow cell. Since they have the same sequence for the first six cycles, the two clusters may have been mistaken for one larger cluster. When the two clusters differ in cycle seven, the instrument will interpret the signal from the two clusters as noisy signal from a single larger cluster. This cycle will not pass quality filtering. Another consideration is that signal in one base channel can affect signal in another base channel for our instruments using four channel chemistry. This is called spectral overlap, or more commonly, crosstalk. To correct for crosstalk between fluorophores, Illumina instruments will calculate and apply a matrix correction to the raw fluorescent signal. This removes overlapping emissions and achieves a more pure signal. To illustrate the effect of crosstalk, the plot on the left shows uncorrected raw signals in the C and A channels, which are both excited by a red laser or LED. The plot on the right shows the corrected signal of the same two bases, which now show a purer signal for each base. The actual degree of signal correction is calculated in each new sequencing run, using signal data from early cycles. The more diverse the library, the more data points available to use in the calculation, creating a more accurate signal correction for all bases. If all clusters have the same sequence, however, the signal baselines are skewed at every cycle and can lead to an inaccurate correction and noisy data. 
The end result is that with poor template generation and an inaccurate matrix correction, the Illumina analysis software may be unable to make sense of Amplicon sequencing data. Many clusters will be filtered out or flagged as low quality, reducing the desired output and quality of the run. In part two of this video series, we will discuss some mitigations and best practices for sequencing amplicons on Illumina instruments with high quality results.